Hi, in this clip I'll demonstrate quite a few things you can do with an LFO. I'll be using modular gear, but this really applies to any software or hardware synth. Let me start with the basics. So LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. Now, I don't like that name for two reasons. First, some LFOs can oscillate at very high frequencies, like this one, and it can be very useful at times. And second, I don't like the word oscillator either, because even though an LFO oscillates back and forth, it's not designed to make sound, but rather to impact sound. So this is an oscillator that makes sound, but an LFO is designed to impact or change a sound. Just like this, where I'm turning a knob and it's impacting the sound, an LFO can turn knobs for us, only they can do it much faster and in different ways than just a simple back and forth motion. Now in this clip I'll show you things way beyond turning knobs, but let's take a look just at that simple example. I'm going to have this LFO control the filter cutoff point at the rate you see here on this LED. And as you can hear, the LFO is controlling this knob. Now, when you're using an LFO, you have three things to think about. The first is depth of motion. If I pass an LFO through an attenuator, I can have anywhere from no motion at all, where there's no impact on the sound, all the way to gradually increasing the impact of the LFO, and you can hear it sweep the filter cutoff point. So depth is the first parameter you want to control with an LFO. The second is rate. And rate can be controlled either with a CV input or with this knob here. And in most synths and some modules, you can also synchronize the rate of the LFO to the rhythm or beat of your song. On the Mini Brute 2, I can sync the rate, as you can see in the LED, to the speed of the sequence. And the last important parameter for an LFO, of course, is its shape, or how it moves back and forth. For example, a square wave is sharp movements back and forth from extremes. Random will jump around. Sometimes this is called sample and hold. And triangle or sine will make gradual movements back and forth. Now, if you want to get to the actual tips, you can use the index on the left to skip ahead, but I wanted to give you a little insight into how analog LFOs work using VariFO. It's an analog quad LFO that supports two waveforms, triangle and square, which change a little bit as they get slower to sort of like a ramp and a pulse. Each LFO has both a manual rate control as well as CV input. And the output, which is determined by these switches, either triangle or pulse, as well as trigger outputs, which are basically a copy of the pulse or square wave that you can use to trigger drums, beats, clocks, and so on. There are a couple of things about this that are interesting. The first is that it's relatively cheap. And the second thing is these capacitors. Capacitors are what determine the rate range of an LFO, whether it's high or low or medium. Now, typically they're on the inside, but here they're on the outside and you can actually take them out and replace them with other capacitors, which are relatively cheap, to get different rates. And that's how an analog LFO like this works. In general, the bigger the capacitor, the slower the rate, and the smaller the capacitor, the higher the rate. A capacitor this small goes well into audio rates. Okay, let's start looking at things we can do with an LFO. I'll just pick a sound here on plates. And again, this is not modular related in any way. You can do this with any LFO. Patch a sine or triangle LFO into the level of the sound you're playing. Set the rate, and you get tremolo. Okay, let's make things a bit more complicated. Let's go for vibrato. I'll connect the same LFO to the frequency of the oscillator. And we get laser beams because the range is too broad. So what we need to do is have that pass through an attenuator, like we did before. And once we refine the range that the oscillator is vibrating from top to bottom, as well as the rate, we get a nice vibrato. Now if we increase that, 
we go from alien abduction to what's really interesting, which is FM synthesis. Now here, just for kicks, I'm using a square wave, but do this with a fast sine LFO and a sine oscillator, and you get these nice FM sounds. Okay, you can get nice things to happen when you have an LFO modulate an LFO. So let's look at an example. I want this motion with one LFO. So let's get this LFO to turn a knob for us. And that's nice, but what if I want to turn another knob? This one. And that's exactly what this LFO's CV input is for. Since I want a slow motion, I'll take the LFO with a big capacitor and plug it into this one. And let it wobble away. Okay, now we're going to go a little bit more into modular territory. It turns out you can use a square LFO as a clock or trigger. In this case for samples, but you can really time anything. And if you want to get some funky timings, why not modulate the LFO with an LFO. Now if you've got more than one LFO, you can use them to trigger multiple sounds. So in this case, my bass drum is triggered by LFO 1, and you can never have enough cowbell with LFO 2. Now these LFOs can be synced to a central clock on the Mini Brute 2. So you can get beats going with an LFO. Now remember I said before, there are different types of LFOs. And nice possibilities come up when you take a random LFO and use that to trigger one of the sounds. Another interesting use for an LFO is as an arpeggiator. Now if I were to just connect an LFO to the VCO, we get lasers again, so we don't want that. But you can pass it through a device called a quantizer. And what a quantizer will do is take a smooth motion of an LFO and pick out only the frequencies that match particular notes. Here I'm using a Disting Mark IV, which also conveniently sends a trigger for us on every note change. Now we have an arpeggiator. Now I can mess with a few parameters here. Uh, one could be the scale, so I could choose different notes to play across the range. And I can also use the uh, built-in attenuator to narrow down the range so that we're not going over all the notes in the scale, but just a few of them. Changing the LFO rate will determine how fast we play. So basic LFO wave shapes are nice, but what if you're bored of the ones you have and you want to create new ones? Now, this is a trick I already showed in the past, but no clip about LFOs would be complete without this. The idea is to create custom LFO wave shapes using a wave folder. In this case, I'll be affecting level, but you can really affect any parameter. So this is kind of like a slow tremolo. Let's make it more interesting by passing it through a wave folder. And fold it onto itself to create a really nice and interesting rhythmic pattern. And you can turn these knobs manually Or, of course, get an LFO to do it for you. There are some really interesting rhythmic possibilities. I think when you take one LFO and have it affect another and have that affect a parameter, in this case, the level of the chord I'm playing. So that's how to create new LFO wave shapes using a wave folder. Now, if you don't have a wave folder, another way to get a nice rhythmic gate is something that I showed you in the intro clip to this video. 
by patching an unattenuated LFO either into the VCA or into the filter cutoff, which is a bit cooler in this case. You can take out notes out of a beat or out of something that's already playing by rhythmically attenuating the sound or filtering out sounds very quickly. So those are just a few ideas of what to do with an LFO. If you have any others, please put them in the comments below. Hit like if you learned something. Hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And don't forget to ring that little YouTube bell. Thanks very much for watching.